Senator Adu Zokalu, who was sentenced to prison for 12 years for diverting 7.65 billion naira from the Abia state government coffers during his time there as governor, has been released from prison. The Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision by a seven-member panel on May 8 this year, held that the Federal High Court in Lagos acted without jurisdiction when it convicted Kalu and a former director of finance in Abia State, Jones Udeogu, in December last year. In order to welcome Kalu, who currently serves as the chief whip of the Senate, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, led other principal officers of the Red Chamber on a solidarity visit. Joining us to discuss this is Debo Adeniro. He is the executive chairman, Coalition Against Corrupt Leaders, Kakol. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, sir. All right. I, I corrected you the other time that Kakol is Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership. Center. No coalition Against Corrupt Leaders. I Did will make that? sure it doesn't happen again. Thank you very Thank much. You. I will make sure My it pleasure. doesn't happen again. All right. That's right. What's your thinking on the whole matter of the Supreme Court's decision and now Kalu's release? First and foremost, uh, the Supreme Court has proven to be dancing to the dictates of deep-pocketed criminals. I don't have any reservation in saying that if I am guilty of any offense, I am ready to face the charges. The law should protect the people of this country, especially the ordinary citizens, the masses, who are the ultimate victims of maladministration that is going on in our clients. To add insult to the injury, you see the Senate, Senate leader, the chairman of the National Assembly, leading members of our National Assembly that we elected to protect us from the usurpers, from the official stealers, armed robbers. They are accentuating the bad behavior of these past leaders who made our lives impossible by paying solidarity visits so somebody that was discharged by the, uh, uh, by the Supreme Court, not because he was not guilty of the offense, but because there are some technicalities which they could have bought their way to get from the Supreme Court. It is most unfortunate thing to happen to us in this country. It's a tragedy. So, and this tragedy can be corrected by the president. How, how, how can the president can the president overrule the Supreme Court? No, the, the president will not overrule the Supreme Court. He will impress it upon the anti-corruption agencies to do their work, to do the needful. Well, the, 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 the EFCC have said they are, going to, they are going to try him again. But in the interim, there are lots of questions about the appropriateness of the Senate president and his uh, principal officers going on a visit to welcome Oji Uzo Kalu back. Should we then expect to see him back at the Senate? You know what I'm saying is that it's like a bird of the same feather. They are flocking together, knowing that their own time will come. That was what happened in the uh, last Senate, where when Saraki was being uh, tried at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, half of the senators will leave the statutory function that they are voted to carry out. They will follow him to the truth in solidarity to the tribunal. But the difference Even in this case is that this person was convicted of a crime. That's the question that the layman on the street keeps asking. And I am asking myself, if you are convicted for a crime and released on a technicality, what is the moral justification, or should I say, what is the responsibility of the House of Assembly, that's the Senate now, to try and right this anomaly? You know, when Buhari came, what he begged the, the National Assembly to do was to strengthen the anti-corruption process. By extension, the National Assembly is supposed to strengthen the ICPC, the EFCC, the SFU, 
the NAVDAC, all of those anti-corruption agencies. But they didn't do it because they know that a preponderance of members of the National Assembly has one uh, corruption baggage on their neck or the other. So instead of strengthening the anti-corruption war, they weakened it. They weakened it because they knew that the trials of some of them, like Ojiz or Kalu, like a few other former governors that are still drawing salary and, 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 and pension from different, I mean, at different levels, have questions to answer. They know that some of them still have cases that have been there for more than 12 years. The problem with our public exposed persons in Nigeria is that they are not in a hurry to clear their names of the sleaze. All right, um, Mr. Devo, hired, yes. Devo, please. Um, we're, we need to welcome um, someone else to the conversation, uh, legal practitioner Evan Sufeli. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, quickly, let's get to it. What's your overall um, impression of the, the key officers of the National Assembly going to welcome um, Oji Uzokalu? Should we expect to see him back at the Red Chamber? Well, uh, it, it, it shows that um, the leadership of the Ninth Assembly, are, they, are, they are really uh, putting forth out there a very negative impression about their integrity as honorables. Uh, a honorable member is supposed to have a certain level of dignity. Uh, this is a man who has been convicted, albeit the conviction turned out to be uh, not um, proper, not because of the merit of the case, but just because of the fact that uh, the judge who uh, gave the judgment lacked jurisdiction because of his elevation to the Court of Appeal. So, but if you look at it, the Supreme Court did not fault the judgment on the merit. The Supreme Court faulted the judgment on the fact that the, the, the judge has no jurisdiction whatsoever to have delivered such judgment. That should, have, that should have informed this honorable member, the leadership of the National Assembly, to begin to make a rethink. The fact that uh, Ojus or Kahlo is part of them is not a reason why they should throw caution to the wind. I am not saying that uh, they should not accept him in the house. Of course, they don't have such rights. But going to his house, I mean, it, it shows some level of uh, moral carelessness. But uh, isn't I mean, there something, I mean... Um flawed in having somebody who you rightly um, acknowledged was let go on a technicality, be making laws, allowing him to make laws for other citizens to obey. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Supreme Court had to look at uh, the, the provisions of law and the, the provisions of statute upon which they, they came to that judgment. Well, I do not support the judgment uh, in its totality, but because uh, it, it brought up a lot of issues of uh, distrust and uh, public, um, uh, uh, the public, the, the, the trust that is reposed on the judiciary by the public was reduced to almost nothing by that action. But um, uh, what you have just raised this evening is also part of what we need to consider because. I mean, someone who have gone through a trial, who have been found wanting, how be it that the judgment was uh, uh, struck out, um, should ordinarily should ordinarily recuse himself from uh, 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 making further appearances at the National Assembly. I know there are people who will come and make argument that he represents a constituency and this is a constitutional democracy. And therefore, uh, the court, having, uh, having asked the lower court to go and retry him, he should be given the leeway to uh, come back to the National Assembly, even as the chief whip of the House. He's a principal member of the House. Uh, I, you know all that. And you see, we are, we are, gradually, we are gradually destroying this country on, 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 the, on, the, on the front line of moral decadence and then uh, a lack of consequences for, for wrong actions. And okay, this is sending a, about, very, a very negative message to our younger generation. Okay, let, let me flip this question to um, Mr. Debo, and then I'll come back to you. What should we be learning from all of this? Well, uh, thank you very much. What we should be learning 
is that our leaders are not reliable when it comes to uh, the process of protecting the masses. That our leaders could be shameless uh, when it comes to identifying with uh, known criminals in our society. It doesn't matter what anybody says. The gentleman called Ojin Zokalu stands conv uh, convicted as charged. And like uh, the lawyer said, if morality is uh, in the psyche of our leaders, if our leaders have sense of shame at all, he should have voluntarily recused himself from the National Assembly. And even the leadership of the National Assembly could have declared his seat vacant as soon as he was convicted and sent to jail. Not that they would be waiting to circumvent the cause of justice. And as a matter of fact, I see their hands, the hands of some of our leaders, the leadership of the National Assembly, within which Oju Zokalu is a chief whip, protecting themselves. And because they want to protect themselves, they could have done everything to convince the trial judges, I mean, justices of the Supreme Court that the um, new uh, uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act should be set aside that, because that is what Supreme Court justices have done. But right. then they know that there is a provision that allowed the, the president of the uh, 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 court of appeal to allow the trial judge to go back and conclude the case when he did. They right. knew that the provision was there, that, okay, they have to take a process, and that process should be followed when the... Uh, administration of criminal justice law was being processed. Why did they come up with it? All right, was, let, uh, let, let's bring um, uh, Mr. Evans back in. Yeah. The same question, what should we be learning from this? And are there loopholes in our laws that perhaps needs to be addressed so that we don't have this kind of situation? Yeah, what, 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 what we have learned from this, I mean, the entire judicial system and the general public, is the trite principle of law that um, jurisdiction is the lifeblood of litigation. And uh, whenever a judgment is given, the Supreme Court have ruled uh, uh, previously that uh, any judge that delivers a judgment, however wonderful such judgment is, once that court have juris lack jurisdiction to do so, that judgment will be set aside and it goes to no issue. So this, uh, this particular case has come to reinforce that position uh, to the effect that uh, that uh, section uh, 369 sub 7 of the uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act, uh, you know, uh, the provision runs contrary to other provisions of law, uh, constitutional provisions and all that. But um, one of the things I think um, we have not learned also is that uh, this excessive reliance on technicalities, uh, and then we sacrifice justice at the altar of technicality, uh, is putting a, a serious uh, pressure on us because um, our politicians have this the, uh, a tendency to subvert they have the, that tendency to always want to subvert the law, to do the wrong things and get away with it. And here we are uh, giving them support by certain decisions that we are taking. Uh, this man is going to go back to the House and then represent his constituency. Ordinarily, if we are in a proper democracy, his constituency ought to have recalled him for that action, for the disgrace he brought to that constituency. But well, because even the public have no moral rectitude, uh, the Nigerians are all over the places. Uh, morality is in serious deficit. And then um, upholding people uh, who have done wrong is what we do. Uh, we give them chief sensei title too, and we praise them so long as they have money that will go around. But when we look at our conduct as individuals, we are not ready to grow uh, uh, our democracy by our conduct with the way we are going about things. 
And that is very unfortunate, for fortunate. It's All condemnable, right. it's rejectable. And the Nigerian society should begin to uh, look at a way to rejig ourselves so that we can uphold the principles of integrity in everything we do, so that governance will have you know, a basis upon which growth can take place. Because Never. what we have okay. now is a complete system that is, um, uh, even when we criticize the politicians heavily, and you come down to the followers on, in their closet, how they live, with little authority, how they mess things up and all that. Evans, let's, let's give that, uh, uh, some talk time to Double as well. Um, now, when the Supreme Court ruled, he issued a statement um, saying, I mean, a statement was in the media, credited to him, saying he has learned his lesson and would, going forward, fight injustice in any guise. Are you expecting another statement? And does he have the moral justification based on the ruling in his case to pursue this course of action, fighting for injustice, as he said? Now, um, the lesson he claimed that he learned is not about to be morally upright. Is to, uh, is that he is aware that uh, people he thought he could buy over are not purchasable. They don't make themselves available. Evidences that he thought he would be able to buy or destroy uh, have become indestructible. And that people who think will tolerate his uh, thievery are, are not ready to tolerate it, thinking that judiciary can always, I mean, judicial officer can always be bought. Those are the lessons that he, he thought he had. Because he once boasted that he could buy anything that money can buy. That All he right, discovered Deborah. that he could not buy judiciary in the way he had planned it. Yes, he has been able to, you know that he has gotten interlocutory Appeal, appeal during this case several times over, up to the Supreme Court, maybe about two or three times. Debo, I, I'm this sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I have to interject. Enough money to, to, to pay for it. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I have to cut you off. We are um, out no. of time. But thank okay. you so much for what you were able to share with us this it evening. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing us to uh, share your time. And uh, Evans Ufeli, thank you too. Thank you so much uh, for your time yeah. this evening. You're welcome. All right, we'll take our plus report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take to stay with us. The Adosid High Court has entertained a suit asking the court to determine the eligibility of the Edo State or Progressive Congress governorship aspirant Osage Ize Inyamu to contest the upcoming governorship elections on the platform of the APC. The suit, a fallout from the intra-party crisis that has rocked the state APC in recent times, is one many think might affect the chances of the APC in the upcoming September governorship polls. Journalists were barred from covering the court seating as the court adjourned the case to June 17th. Counsel to Osage Ize Iyamu said the court adjourned the date, hoping both counsels would have filed all processes needed so that a judgment can be reached. These are very straightforward. The first person is one, uh, a Kenneth Isekheme. is the claimant. The second claimant is also there, and the third claimant. The defendant on record is uh, the APC. The second is uh, Adamali Oshomoli, who is the national chairman of uh, All Progressive Congress. And the third is uh, Pastor Saige Zayam. The gravamen of the matter is they are actually challenging the membership of the third defendant, which is Pastor Saige Zayam, whether he's actually a member of APC or not. So they came to court by way of originality summons before the court. They also filed motion ex parte and motion on notice. But after several arguments, because cancer have already entered defense, for the defendants, the court now said, oh, it's not going to hear the motion restraining anybody. Let us go into the substantive matter. We say, what we are going to do, ordinarily we have 21 days to file our process by the rules of court. But the court have to abridge the time because of the importance of this matter. And so, okay, now, we the, all defendants are given 10 days to file their process, response by way of a counter affidavit to the original.
originating summer, while the claimants have two days to, res to reply on point of law to whatever issues we raise on our written address. So the matter is adjourned to on the 17th of June. Truth be told, maintaining the delicate balance between the country's federal character system and competence may be tricky, especially in a country as complex as Nigeria. Still, the government must also understand how tricky and dangerous it is to create, willfully or not, by her appointments, the impression that certain government positions are the exclusive preserve of a particular section of the country. Indeed, no part of this country has monopoly on competence, so when people say there is something skewed, it is not a time for defensiveness, but to pursue a review to engender a sense of balance and equity. The government must do better to reflect the federal character, a creation meant to ensure that appointments to public service institutions fairly reflect the linguistic, ethnic, religious, and geographic diversity of such a country as ours to promote a sense of togetherness. We should be together. We should. And that's my take for tonight. Thank you for watching. Plus Politics returns same time, same station. Until I see you again, please be well.